Hello, people. Linker here for a very special hero analysis, joined with a very special guest. Say hello. Hey, guys. It's Vulcan. Thanks for having me back on the channel, dude. Really appreciate it. <laughs> That's awesome. So Vulcan came us to analyze a very special hero for Vulcan himself. That's Damon, but you have a different name for him, don't you? My boy Stitchy. He's all right. <laughs> That's right. So Damon, the son of Shamira and Nero, supported by his immortal ally Stitchy, is an offensive graveborn tank stealing enemy life force and stats to both handle enemy hits and drain their life away. What do you think about his abilities? I find it thoroughly enjoyable. I like the whole concept of his, um, just sort of the way he functions of sending Stitchy in to do the attacking while he stands in the back and just soaks up a big shield. Now, something that would be really interesting would be if Stitchy could take aggro, but then he would be able to die, which wouldn't be the greatest. The fact of the shielding and stuff like that that he does get is really nice. I know in the end game, a lot of people play him in the back row, but for early game, those shields just make him a fantastic carry that can also deal massive damage. And the fact that he deals massive damage, no matter where he's at in campaign due to this HP scaling, that's what I really enjoy about him. That's incredible because he scales off of enemies with attack rating and Stitchy is scaling up to 600. No, 600 is huge even on normal abilities, but once you steal enemy scaling, just gets so, so strong. Definitely. And like on top of that, you do have a little bit of CC, some heat as well as the shields because that third ability with Stitchy is going to provide a single target stun and also convert some healing to uh, Damon as well. That's right, but the main ability though has to be Blood Shield. So that's the main mechanic where he steals health and with the signature item stats too, up to three enemies with the ult and he's able to scale off of that. It's actually really incredible the way that he just kind of drains, he both drains the enemies and kind of gets stronger in himself. Like I see that thing in a lot of games. Definitely. And, and it is, like you said, the stats as well, but the shield is really huge. Um, and the one thing, I don't know if you have any input into this, like, because I, like I said, I see in end game, a lot of people still put him in the back row. I feel like there's an, a thing when you use his ultimate, is a, a split second where the shield disappears and the other one generates, which you can actually get killed in that little blank spot of the shield trans, uh, transition. Have you noticed that? That's right. I've seen it a lot. The thing is, it has to do with the haste. So the shield duration is seven seconds and the shield cooldown is eight. So the little thing that you see is both on the ultimate and between usages of shields. So even if you have him maxed out, that happens a lot. And then he has those little windows where he's unshielded. So it's all about tricking those. And if you're really fast, you can actually avoid it altogether. If he has a high amount of haste, he'll be able to both ult and do the blood shields to kind of avoid these little dank spots. But it's definitely one of the things that stops him from carrying a lot. Do you see that happening in the mid game too? Yeah, definitely. Um, even in the early game, I've just started a fresh account where he's my carry and um, I do leave him in the front row, but you do often get caught out where you would be fine, except you do drop that shield and that's where you find your weak spot um, in his usefulness as a tank, which then also brings into the next point. Do you view him as a tank or do you view him more as almost a mage type uh, damage? I just found it interesting when he's a more damage based unit, but they've labeled him a tank. So it's so tricky, I agree with you. Like he's one of the weirdest users of the tank tree because the tank tree actually has some useful stats on it. Like on Elder Tree, tank tree has haste and Daemon loves haste because Daemon stacks it and then he's able to ult faster. All his cooldowns kind of produce. It's really, really awesome to see. So it's kind of weird because he's the mage kind of hero that does the draining, but all at the same time, he's a physical tank. He's also relatively bulky, but because of that, as a carry, he makes relatively weird use of Barricade. Barricade is not the ultimate artifact for him, but I did introduce a new one on the test server. Did you get to see that? The new test artifact that's coming up? I, I saw it. I believe it's out on Global now, but I haven't actually got around to using the artifact yet. All right, that's right. So new global artifact is focused on damage. Daemon will probably one of the most prominent users of it. He's also one of those heroes that requires some level of investment because his signature item and furniture are just so strong. Definitely that like and especially um, the, just upgrading his signature item even just to like 10 or 20 is really nice. Like 20 is really solid. Um, and same with the furniture, getting him up to the three furniture. Like, I, I feel like he's one of those ones that you don't have to fully invest. It's nice to fully invest, but getting those base levels of the two um, is often enough to make him really functional. 
Yeah, so that's one of his strongest spots in, as an early game and mid game carry that he can work just with a plus 20. Stealing enemy abilities in these sections of the game where you're often faced with this 1 to 3 deficit, 1 to 2 deficit, you're able to steal the enemy scalings. Also the plus 30, one fact about that is because his shield cooldown is so low, it's 8 seconds, increasing the duration of the blood shield by 2 seconds makes it so that shield off time is not 3 seconds between the 5 and the 8, but 1 second between the 7 and the 8. So it's actually giving me this extra piece of consistency that in the end game is so, so relevant. Yeah, how, how relevant do you find that if you are playing him in the back row though? In the back row, I think it's a different game. In the back row, if you're able to keep him immune, especially in those mid game chapters, 30, 29, you're probably able to make use of him at plus 20. Uh, stuff like Alna, stuff like Brutus, new heroes, stuff like that, are able to keep him alive for long enough for him to kind of spiral against those tankier enemies. But especially in endgame matchups where he ends up being 1v2, 1v3, the extra bit of consistency on the front line and rarely on the back line if his allies do drop before he does uh, is pretty important. Definitely. And, and the thing I like about the whole system of that, like, you know, in the end game, the 30 is really required. In the mid sort of game, it's not required, is that you can use him as like a secondary carry just out of 20 uh, signature item and you can invest in your core team um, if he's not part of that core team. That's right, especially as you move to multi-stage. Another thing I see many people looking over has to be the furniture. Demon furniture increases damage received by people that hit him by 40%. Now, an unknown fact about that would be that the damage increase also applies to his shield. So his shields, they get larger and he steals a larger enemy health portion with every bit of furniture hit. So if an enemy hits onto him and he uses blood shield, a larger amount of that enemy health will be stolen. I didn't actually realize that. You learn something new every day. That's actually awesome. Yeah, the plus nine though, I feel like you touched on a good point there. If he's used as a soul carry, the plus nine, the main benefit out of it, it extends the duration to six seconds, but that's not usually that big. The big change of it is that if Damon dies, it gives all of his allies a shield. But if you're using it like you do mostly in the mid to end game, uh, where you have him as a lone carry, that doesn't help you much because if Damon dies, you kind of lost your carry and then everything kind of falls apart. Yeah, I, I definitely don't see the nine furniture as being necessary. Like, nice to have, obviously, for the the extra little effect, but also the stats. But yeah, if you main carry, three is pretty much where I'd leave him and then work on other things until maybe later in the game. By the way, one other carry is going to be a very interesting one that's sometimes used to them, especially in tower, is Isolde. And we'll have a very interesting video about that in just a second. So the plus nine, I agree. I think it's mostly about these teams where he has other carries and that's nichely useful, you're usually fine with the three. How about some counters and synergies? What do you use Damon with? Okay, I think with with Damon, I feel like he actually just has a lot of synergies in the in the mid game anyway. I know end game, which you'll touch on, but in the mid sort of game, he really synergizes with anything in state instant, like anything like uh, Rowan, for instance, just general Rowan stuff. Um, you've got the energy that you can boost, especially if he's your carry. Um, you've got the he extra healing uh, to cover him in those windows where he does lose out on his shield and take some damage. Um, and then something like uh, Aziz as well. Also, anything that's going to mitigate your enemy's ults that have a big chance uh, of actually nuking him. Like I feel like that's what really you're looking for in the mid sort of game area is just not him get him not getting bursted down by something really extravagant. Something else I do like in the mid game as well is um, obviously Graveborn synergies, something like Nara to lock out an enemy. If you have Damon in the front row, you can put Nara in the back row behind him, um, lock out one of the enemies that would be attacking him in those early stages where he hasn't generated his shield yet. Um, also, strangely, something like um, Odin, I really do like in the mid game mm -hmm. uh, with Damon, just the ability to keep stacking those stuns, but also you can even put it on one time speed, which never really happens because I know macros <laughs> and everything. But you can actually put it on manual one-time speed and time Odin's ult to actually reset the enemy that is the biggest threat to Damon in that situation. And then obviously you do have the faction bonus that rolls along with that. Um, so those are the main ones that I've been using at the moment. But like I said, any good hero normally has synergies with Damon. He's fairly splashable in the mid game. I agree, very splashable. So all kinds of support, like you said, Rowan and Aziz, still work great into the endgame. These are great. 
Also, any good kind of tank, think Alna, Brutus, or Thorin that can keep aggressive enemies checked. And one that I personally like is Counter Healers, because the way his shield works, he retrieves the health back to the enemy. So what he does is that when the shield expires, the health goes back. And if you apply counter heal to your enemies, less of the shield goes back. And it's such a significant heal. He's the only hero that actually heals enemies. That's also partially why he really hates to see a Nomura on the enemy team, because it actually enhances his own healing on the enemies. <laughs> Making him gain <laughs> sometimes like, one. yeah, more health than they actually had. <laughs> yeah, so you, you like for the counter healing, obviously you like something like Pharrell, um, Obviously, due to general synergies or something like that, like who would you be your main counter healers? Feral, that's right. Silas is an awesome one. Silas is really good. And there's also these odd ones like Kazid sometimes you see and Gwyneth. So there's all kinds of synergies that you could kind of play with with uh, Damon, all kinds of interesting placements. But I think Feral and Silas are the main two counter heals you will see used in endgame campaign. Yeah. Also, he hates going into aggressive enemies with low HP because they give him those smaller shields and they can damage through the shields that they give him. But in, much in the same veins, he likes going into those tankier enemies because there his shields can become too much for the enemies to handle and they can't just burst through. So you can sometimes see the statement just soloing the whole enemy team on his own. And yeah, I think you touched on another point there that leads to another reason of why Damon is actually so good is that he is that sort of wall breaker where a lot of other carries may not shine so well against the such such tanky enemy. That's where he really thrives, which makes him just a good hero in general for most people just to build because he gives you, he fills in that blank spot where you may not be as strong with the other heroes that you have built. Exactly. So if you're thinking about an Aaron going into a Scrag, you're not too happy going into a Scrag. That thing will end up like not dying to your Vortex and just killing you sometime. And then a Daemon into a Scrag looks much, much better because he's still his own health and he just can't do anything about it, even in the 1v1. Definitely. Yep. And yeah, I, I think also with that, I haven't actually checked this. With Scrag, does the amount of health that Damon steals be affected by his damage mitigation and any other damage mitigation in general? Do you know that? No. So the only thing affecting Damon damage, the only thing, there's actually two things. First is going to be uh, the own furniture ability. The furniture is coded specifically to let him steal more. And second is going to be a high cap. This is an unknown fact. He has a 700% attack scaling cap. So if it's above 700% of his attack, which is a lot, it's like really barely reachable. Uh, he caps at that. But like that might be relevant if we walk into one to 10 power ratio campaign. In current like one to three, one to five, it's incredible. You rarely ever hit that cap. Even if you were hitting the cap, it's still going to be a good chunk of damage anyway. Yeah, I mean, by the time you hit the cap, the shields are just so large too. So it's really, really nice. All right. Thank you so much for coming. I think we had a lot of unknown facts about Damon. I think people know him better and it was awesome to have you. Thanks, man. I think I definitely learned some things along the way as well. I didn't know about that 700% scaling and all that stuff. But um, once again, thanks for having me on the channel, dude. I really do appreciate it. You're doing some fantastic content, so keep it up. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching. If you like this kind of collab, Vulcan is an awesome guy. Let me know below. Like, subscribe, and I've been Linker. Peace.